Hello, and welcome to The Beat, a news and talk program brought to you by the Center for Community Media here at Worcester State University. I'm your host, Alexis Eslanian, and today we will be interviewing Tammy Tebow, Assistant Dean of the Academic Success Center. How are you, Tammy? I'm good. How are you? Good. Can you please tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you became the Assistant Dean of the Academic Success Center? Sure, I'd love to. So I've been at Worcester State for eight and a half years, but before that, I love being on a college campus. So undergraduate school, I went to Westfield State, then college, now university, and then I went to Springfield College for my master's, and I haven't left a college campus yet. <laughs> um, when I was an undergraduate student, I was an orientation leader, a resident assistant. Then when I went for my master's, I was a resident director. I love working with college students, love helping them. Um, it's really my passion. The college environment is definitely a fun place to be. What is the mission of the Academic Success Center? So I'd like to say that we just want to help every student, but more specifically, we want to get students the information that they need, refer them to the right people, and just encourage them to be the best student they can be. That doesn't always mean getting an A in every class. It just means succeeding and moving forward towards a bachelor's degree. Sort of like being on the right track. Yeah. Can you explain the importance of the academic advising? It's crucial. It's what we do. It's what we think is one of the most important things on a college campus. Every class counts. So students need to complete their major requirements, their LASC requirements, which is the general education curriculum. And so we just always wanna make sure that we work with our faculty, our students, and that you're completing the requirements for the degree. Of course, it's fun to take classes and choose um, different things that are your passion outside of your major. We just want to make sure that students are moving towards the bachelor's degree, enjoying the classes that they're taking, and getting the support that they need at the same time. What philosophy does the center follow when advising students? We really want to see the student beyond the classroom. You know, everybody has something going on besides going to class every day. So when the staff is meeting with students and asking them questions, they really need to ask more. I mean, I joke with students and say, I'm probably gonna ask more questions of you than you're gonna ask of me. But that only helps us get to all the other stuff that they might not know they have a question about. And so when students leave the office, I feel like we answered all their questions and probably tucked a little bit more information that they weren't expecting to get. So that's really our philosophy. Right. Would you mind discussing the math and English placement tests and how they factor into a student's progress towards their degree? This is a great question. It's one we get all the time. Um, to give you one straight answer, though, is not fair. It's, it's a complicated topic. Um, students, depending on their major, depending on their high school GPA, um, it really just depends. Um, we tell students, always come down and see us and let us know your high school GPA. We can look that up. Let us know what major you're interested in, um, and then we can give you that answer. Um, some students don't need to take a math placement test. There's a math course, it's called Math 105. They can kind of jump right into that, only if they're in certain majors, only if they have that certain high school GPA. Right. So there's um, friends talk, right? And so if your classmate you know, says, oh, well, I don't have to take it, you should not, as a student, assume that's not you. So head on down to see us and get the, the accurate information. It definitely depends on the individual because everyone's coming from different placements and things like that. Yeah. I never want to see a student get the wrong information. So. Right. What advice would you offer to an undeclared student that is unsure about what major to take? So we have students that declare their major and then change their mind. Not everybody talks about that, but it, it does happen. For me, I changed my major in the last semester of college. I went to my student teaching to be an educator, and I quit on the first day. <laughs> my classmates probably looked at me for three and a half years and said, oh, she knows exactly what she wants to do. I wish I was like that. She has so much passion. But I changed my mind. So what I say to undeclared students is it's OK to not know just yet what you're interested in. It's probably actually better, so you don't change your mind at the last minute. Take classes to explore. Um, really connect with faculty, ask them questions. Um, you know, we are all here working on a college campus and teaching on a college campus, but there's no assumption what we studied when we were in undergraduate. So I tell them, explore, connect, talk to people, 
um, and then head on back down to the Academic <laughs> Success Center and we can try to you know, take those um, areas of interest and plug them into different majors that, that might be what you decide you end up want to wanting to study. Right. And for undeclared majors, you don't know unless you try it. Right. So if you try a little bit of everything, you can kind of figure out what you like and don't like, and that's how it can factor in on picking what you would like to enjoy doing. There's different types of undeclared majors, what we've found, and we only get that because, like I said, our philosophy is to ask a lot of questions. Right. Some of our undeclared students come in and say, I absolutely do not know <laughs> what I want to study. Then the second type is, I can't decide between A or B, maybe even C. And then the third type is, well, I really, I just want to come to Worcester State. You don't even have my major. I was hoping to study physical therapy. You know, so all those different types of undeclared students um, we need to talk to them more and get them the support that they need for those three areas that they're in. We can't just always assume an undeclared student has no idea. That's, that's not always accurate. Right. And that's what you're here for at the end of the day. It is job security for me, <laughs> 100%. Keeps you in business. Right. What is the CLEP exam and how does it work? So students ask about this all the time. Um, from high school, if you're familiar with advanced placement, um, it's very similar. It's a product through College Board that allows you to take a test and earn credit. So we have a, an entire sheet in our office of all the CLEP exams that we will accept and how they translate here to Worcester State. For example, there's a US History CLEP that will equal HI 111, US History 1 here at Worcester State. So number one, if you've already taken that class, you can't take the CLEP. Um, but if you're a history buff and you know a lot about history and you think you could actually pass an exam on just the content without taking a course, it might be an option for you. There's a range of topics and areas that you can take the test in. It costs um, a certain amount of money. It does change, so I'm not gonna quote it today. <laughs> um, but if you go to collegeboard.org, you can see how much the test is. You can purchase the test, you get a voucher, and then you would come to the Academic Success Center to book your appointment. When you take the test, it's another $20 for us to administer it. And then depending on how well you do, you could earn that college credit. We always say, excuse me, ask students to talk to us before they purchase the test, because sometimes they have taken the course and then they purchase the test, or um, it's just not something that we would advise them to do, and there might be a different test they should have taken instead. Um, but it's a great way to earn credit. Um, sometimes students wanna take an extra course in a semester, um, because they know the topic, well, they might be able to take the test for CLEP. Like you said, sometimes students purchase a voucher for a certain topic but have already taken it. Could they then use it towards another topic? There are sometimes where College Board will allow them to transfer the test. They could say that they, they um, purchase the test by accident and then right. you know, either get their money back or convert it to a different test. Yep. If a student is put on academic probation, what does that exactly mean? It means different things at different times. Um, there's pre-probation -pro pre warning that students can go on or academic probation. It really depends on how many credits you've attempted and what your GPA is. Um, on the whole, it means that you cannot register for more than 13 credits. Um, and after a certain amount of semesters, you might be asked to take time off from Worcester State for a year. Um, again, it depends on if you're a current uh, first year student or a transfer student how those things lay out, and we always want students to come in and talk to us. Um, coming off probation as a first year student can be kind of easy. If you failed a couple courses, just repeating those courses in the next semester can quickly um, turn around that GPA. Um, sometimes students don't realize that repeating a course is what they need to do, um, so working with their faculty advisor and in conjunction with the Academic Success Center, we can turn it around pretty quick. Um, it's just, again, how you said before, being, it's an individual situation. Right. I might say a student took a really difficult course and, and they might say to me, and now you want me to take it again? So we really need to talk through what is the best um, course of action for the student to come off probation. Sometimes taking a course again can be even easier because you already know what to expect. It depends. I'll say to them, did you not pass the class because you never went? or because you worked really, really hard. You know, that's, that's right. something that I would need to know if I was advising a student on whether or not to repeat the course. And what resources are in place for a student on probation? So 
I mean, the ones for probation are the same for any student, but we do reinforce these supports for students on probation. So what we have in the Academic Success Center is a peer-to-peer -peer program, which is really matching students that are in the same courses to work together, um, to study together, to support one another, and to keep each other on track. It is not tutoring. There is not somebody that then tutors these students in this peer-to-peer -peer group. But it is a way for students to connect. We found through the pandemic that in online courses, students would see each other as a box next to each other on a Zoom call, and were a little afraid to say, hey, who are you? Let's meet up. So that's where peer-to-peer -peer came from, um, and we're extending it through now to fall 21 um, to see if students are still interested in connecting with one another. On top of that, there are tutoring courses through the Math Center, through the Writing Center, and in the Academic Success Center, we do offer tutoring for specific courses. So we tell students they should come in and see what's available, and we can connect them with the tutoring services. Right. Lastly, just meeting with an academic <coughs> advisor. You know, keep stay connected with your faculty member, um, who's your advisor and somebody in academic success, just to hold you accountable, to cheer you on. I mean, sometimes that's just, it seems pretty basic, but it's what students definitely need. Right, whether they don't know it, you know. Right. If a student, if a student needs support from staff in the academic success center, can they walk into the office or do they need to make an appointment? So right now, the majority of us are back. Um, we are, some of us are working from home a day or two a week, but the majority of the staff is in the office. I always like to see students connect back with the advisor they had started with. Um, so, you know, if they pop in and the, that advisor is not there, I would love for them to make an appointment and come back. Um, building relationships in the office is so important, and not that somebody else like me <laughs> would want to help a student, but sometimes you've already told your story, I already know you, so it's better to connect with somebody you've continued to work with. Um, so they certainly can walk in, our door is open, we are staffed in, in person, um, but if the person that you're seeking is not in the office or not available, we would recommend that you make an appointment, and usually that could just be the next day. Right. I'd like to say we're super busy, but we also have <laughs> lots of room for appointments to check in. Good. In your opinion, what is academic success? Well, I think I said it earlier, um, it's not an A. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that every student has to get an A to be successful, um, to have a 4.0 to be successful. For me, is that students enjoy being here, they enjoy learning, they're engaged in learning, and they're always moving forward towards a bachelor's degree. To me, that is success. That could take a student 10 years. That could take a student three years. Um, it's, it's you achieving your goals and enjoying it and, and seeing the true value of it and having lots of passion. I reflect back on myself. I think I was successful in my undergrad till I quit my student teaching on that day. And I, I'll be honest with you, I felt like this was all pointless. I turned to a couple of my um, advisors that were like, I can't believe you just did that. But one, one of them said, all right, so what are you gonna do now? <laughs> you still have to graduate. And then within a couple of days I realized I am still being successful even though I didn't continue exactly on the path that I had set out. I had to convince my parents that I didn't mess everything up over the last three and a half years. So I take that experience that I had and really translate that into the students I meet with. It doesn't, you don't have to do it in a certain amount of time. You don't have to take a straight path. You can left, you can right, um, and it doesn't have to be a 4.0, and still that is success. Do you regret your decision at all? No, no, I don't regret it at all. Um, I, Quickly picked up the pieces, um, added, it was during add drop, so I added courses to fulfill the credits that I needed. And within a month, I was applying to master's degree programs and um, ended up at Springfield College on a full scholarship. So um, there were a couple hours, though, <laughs> that there was like, what am I gonna do? But right. I, I had somebody at Westfield State that helped me pick up the pieces. And so that's what I instill in my staff, and that's what I do while I'm here is I, not that everybody needs the pieces picked up, but we always just want to support students on the path that they're choosing. And like you said, it was that one advisor that had helped you out and really refocused you. Yeah. Is there anything else that you might want to tell our audience about the Academic Success Center? Um, we're just ready to see students. You know, we've been away for a little bit and it's been remote and I gotta say, it's been awesome being back on campus having students come in to see us, whether it's behind a mask or not. Like, we just love seeing students in person. Um, it's been really exciting to be back, so stop by and say hi. Good.
Good, I'm glad. And like you said, it's not about A and B and how long it takes you to get there. Every student's an individual, they're different, and that's why you're here to help. Exactly. Thank you for joining us, Tammy. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching this segment of The Beat. Please remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you next time.